Friends, fans, and fine folk, grab your drinks and snacks and come on down for the very first take of this short rest around the campfire with me and Duke on that side of me. Uh, Duke from hey. One Shot Questers, everybody! Woo -woo -woo -woo. <laughs> wow, what a what a great first time intro. Let me tell you, I, I, most I of my that. YouTube videos of short rests start with people going, this is a great first time to be here. <laughs> yep, uh, what a... <laughs> fantastic first time to be here man i have uh, done that so no, many times on our stream like hey we're we're starting our D, D sessions and we got like 300 people on and i'm like going into my talking and then i look after like two or three minutes of talking i look at the chat and they're like duke you're muted muted, you're muted. we have no you're idea muted. what you're saying and i'm like start it all again Gosh, dang it. i yeah. know i am um, uh, uh my my um <laughs> i've got i've got uh a list of emotes that I that I need for the channel, and uh, and uh -huh. quite a few times people have told me like you just need a muted emote, like a big, just a big warning sign emote that people can oh spam in the chat, being like you're muted, God. you're muted. That is a wonderful idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I <laughs> fixed really it good. now. Um, welcome along. Good. It's wonderful Thank to you. have you here. Thank you for <laughs> making the time. I know that you're a very busy boy. Um, just a little bit, but it's fine. Just a little bit. So, uh, for for anyone who doesn't know you, anyone from my community that hasn't seen your stuff, um, mm -hmm. who who are you? I'm going to keep gesturing to that side, and you're on that side. It's fine. It happens. Um, I am One Shot Questers. Uh, that is my channel name. My name is Duke Davis, and I am focusing on... A lot of people know me by... Uh, the D D comedy stuff so i make a lot of i first got my big break on tiktok that went really well and with just you know tiktok being tiktok with how limited you can be with creation over there i moved over to youtube and that's where things really started to happen got almost four hundred thousand subscribers on youtube and slowly but surely um we are going to become the our hope right now is we're going to become like the mr beast of <laughs> D, D fantasy community we got a lot of projects we got coming on here in a second and we're going to be filming them at the end of the month i got like three videos that we film at the end of the month and they're going to be big <laughs> you're going to be uh, you're going to be giving away tens of thousands of dollars to strangers like Mr. Beast. Uh, yeah, a little bit. That's <laughs> kind of what happened. It, but to like this community in general, because what I was thinking and talking about with friends or just how I was seeing my channel go and everything, I was like, um, you know, the the D and D community and the fantasy community has been, they just they give so much. They mm. this community just gives so oh, yeah. so much, <laughs> right. and from what. Yeah. Yeah, and just from what I've seen, when creators of things do that, they're like, oh, thank you so much. We're, we're going to give back to you guys, I swear. And whether that's in, like, content or um, – oh, thank you. Whether that's in content or whether that's in um, uh, pr uh, producing merch, I guess is what you'd say. And that's when, like, mm. people are like, oh, we're giving back. But it's like, ah, uh, they're <laughs> but, still but having also to, like... give me money for it. <laughs> I know exactly. That's kind of how it's going, and so I, I'm like, you know what? No, like, like here, I'll tell you. One of the big projects that we're doing is we're going to a local game store. I go play Yu-Gi-Oh at, and um, they got a huge selection of D and D stuff, and I'm gonna buy all of their D and D stuff, and we're gonna give it away at their event. Damn, they, that's cool. Like, yeah, no, it's been really cool. Like a lot of the uh, ad sponsorships for the videos you've seen have been like funding this yeah. project because it's, it's so expensive i, I imagine um, uh, give me but... everything you have in D and and i'll give it away that's exactly yeah, that can't be cheap. exactly it's it's gonna be great like I'm, I'm so freaking excited for it we're gonna be making the posters and everything and advertising it next week that's so, very exciting so so yeah. it's, uh, so what what event is it that's uh that it's in celebration of what's the like you said you were given given it away at is it just like you're just it's, doing it just we're just we're just doing it it's like okay <laughs> let's let's just do it because well i there's multiple reasons why i'm doing this one to just give back to the community and it's like no one's really seen this happen like we see it for like a bunch of other niches but we don't really see it mm. for like table the ttrpg community or the fantasy community and um so it was just like um when we moved down here to texas 
is I, I moved from Idaho to Texas. All is just me and my wife. We have like really no friends or anything. And so like I got into like a bit of a rough part. And so mm-hmm. I started going to this. Uh, uh, I started going to this a game shop. There we go. Started to go play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I just got back into it because of the new games that just came out. And everyone there was so great. Everyone was so friendly. The card shop was like giving me things to help me get started with things. Like really, really helped me out. And it made me just, it, it, it made me just feel really good. And I saw what they had and I was like, you know what? I'm going to give back to the d community. by giving away a bunch of stuff. And um, I'm also wanting to say thank you to the card, uh, the game shop that I go to because they gave me mm. friends. They yeah. made me feel loved and welcome. And so it's like, kill two birds with one yeah, stone. Yeah, yeah. Let's just sure. do it. <laughs> yeah. And then the and then the very next day somebody comes in to buy a D D book and they curse your name because they don't have anything in stock. <laughs> yeah. Everything's out. No, we're we're gonna make sure we leave a couple things there. <laughs> so <laughs> buy literally everything they've got and then everybody hates you. This backfire. I know, yes. No. no I know. <laughs> um so yeah, I've seen you uh, you're big into Yu-Gi-Oh, eh? I've seen you on your channel yeah. um opening Yu Gi Oh Yu Gi Oh cards. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, what's how long you been into that? Uh, so I got into it when I was a kid. Like, I was watching the anime, and it was really fun. And I think I re... Me and my wife were watching... I don't know if anyone's watching Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, but uh, we, were, we were watching the GX series, which is my favorite series so far. Um, I really like that storyline and what they do. But... Um, I, I So I stopped, and then... I started playing like dual links on my phone. So I was like, oh yeah, like I remember I was like really into that. And so mm-hmm. I started playing and I got really into it and then found out there was a really good game for it on Steam. And so I bought the Steam version and then they're like, oh, we got master duels now. And so I got master duels and then coming into a area where like a city where there's so much things to do, found out there's Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. So I started buying my own set and everything and uh, it's still been good it's it, been, i haven't won very much but you know, it's fun. is it like a um is it like a magic the gathering in that it can be kind of pay to win like if you if you have the money to buy the good cards then you can you can make yeah the best deck it's kind of kinda like that so you'll you'll have those people that will go in and it's like one turn they'll otk you and it's just like <laughs> hey that's not that's not very fun so like i built my deck i don't go in to win i go mm. in to have just a fun yeah. duel like if we're yeah. both going back and forth we're both uh countering each other that to me is fun and if i lose you know what i don't care i had you so much fun my trap card. If, yeah exactly but if i win i'm also like oh cool like i won that <laughs> really amazing duel but yeah. then i also feel bad for the other guy because they're like oh. <laughs> And I'm like, no, it's fine. <laughs> I've got a um I've got a friend who plays um uh what's it called? It's a Marvel superhero one. Uh, Le- uh Legends. No, that's not it. Can't remember now. Um but uh he <laughs> he says he, he rarely wins uh, tournaments or he re- rarely won when he actually played in tournaments and things. Yeah. Because he was more he was more focused on like the theme of his deck. He'd be like well, I can't have mm-hmm. I can't have Spider Man and the Fantastic Four and uh, the the Hulk all together. That makes no sense. So he'd have like an entire Hulk deck, or he'd have like an entire Fantastic Four deck, or whatever. And it's uh-huh. not necessarily the most optimized way because the he'd be going up against people who are super uh, min maxing, going like, oh well, well Hulk's yep. ability on this card really matches with Doctor Doom's o- over here, and I'll put those to. And you're like, but that's not the th- what's the theme? How how are they all working together? I know I I'm not like that. Like I sadly to. <laughs> have good duels where i'm at i had to kind of get a little bit meta in my deck mm. but it's still i found out this last duel i, I was having good duels but i didn't win just because <laughs> I, I was trying all the wrong cards at the wrong time type of a thing but yeah it's yeah. still good i enjoy yeah. the crap out of it my uh, i go my for the Yu-Gi-Oh! special factor my Yu-Gi-Oh experience was uh that i i didn't watch any anime at all growing up um and then a couple of years ago maybe about four years ago now um mm-hmm. a friend of mine who's a real weeb he he was talking about all this anime stuff and i mentioned i didn't i'd never seen dragon ball z and he was like what <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah i should i should watch it for for like just understanding all of the references that are in yeah. pop culture and things um and he goes oh you definitely should uh and then he he uh he decided oh we're gonna we're gonna make it into a podcast we're gonna make your introduction to anime into a podcast so for, oh, okay. for every week for a year, it was him as a proper weeb 
uh, me as the complete noob, and then one other friend who's kind of like in the middle ground, who's like he would watched an- anime growing up, but not really into it. Right. And we- and every week we would watch a new, uh, like three more episodes of Dragon Ball Z, um, and, uh, and and then talk about it. And then like our homework between weeks was to watch some other anime as well. So I've introduced oh, nice. me to anime. Uh, it was called Keep Your Friends Close and Your Anime's Closer. Um... <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. That's really cool. <laughs> And so, so I was I was introduced to An- uh, Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, "This is garbage." <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, I ain't watched it in a while, but this is garbage." <laughs> oh my god! And we were watching the um, uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai, which is like the the condensed version as well. And there was still like oh. there was still like three episodes at a time where he's just I'm summoning a spirit bomb, and nothing else happens. <laughs> right, and, oh, and then god. they like, ca- and then it, I almost said cast it, and then they they yeah, send then, it and then send it. off the spirit bomb and then the other guy like just survives it and goes but i'm now 10 million power and the, the oh, power creep is just absolutely insane it never so, out yeah <laughs> so we eventually stopped with dragon ball z and moved on to some other anime um and, and my homework was to watch these these other sort of iconic ones that i should know something about and i went away and watched some Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then came back and was describing it to my 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 weeb friend and he was like what did you watch that's not Yu-Gi-Oh, and I was like, it definitely was. It, it was the main guy with the cr- crazy hair and and, yeah. and stuff. But there was just no cards involved, and he was like, of course there's cards yeah. involved. And I was like, no, he was doing other games. He was doing he was doing like a he was a a, a cafe like a, a a diner, and he was like he was making some sort of betting games based on the things on the table. He was like, I don't know what you've watched, but it's... and we looked it up. <laughs> Apparently, I watched like a, an unreleased Japanese version or something, and not like oh. the one that eventually got to America. Because they re-released, they sort of remade it, rebooted yeah. it, and and introduced the card game right from the beginning. But they yeah. apparently in the original Japanese release, there was it was like it was it was still about games and his the um what is it the pharaoh that's the pharaoh spirit or something there within him. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was that, but he was it was just all about any sort of gambling, any sort of gaming. And so the first three uh-huh. episodes was like he made some sort of game about uh the the things on the table at a diner, and then the next game was something about dice. And then I think uh-huh. there was a card game, but like with a regular deck of cards, not like yeah, videos. yeah. <laughs> so I went away and watched this weird thing, apparently. So that's no. My... Um, the, actually, the Japanese version, I really want to watch the original one with that because they like when it brought over to here in America, they four kids got it and they made it, you know, kid friendly, you know, to sell everything. But I started watching some of the Japanese clips of it and like. We know Yu-Gi-Oh as you're I'm banishing you to the shadow realm things like that. The Japanese version of it is I'm banishing your soul to hell. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I need to watch this version. This is way more intense." Like, what? <laughs> you don't do things by half over there. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> Um, I just realized as well I should finish introductions because uh, people yes. might be watching this from my community, but people might be here from your community and not know who I am. Uh, so, is true. <laughs> so for the people I'm seeing for the first time in chat, welcome. Thank you for popping, popping in. Uh, thanks for coming along. Uh, I'm Robert Hartley GM. I'm a dungeon master full time. Uh, I play Dungeons and Dragons uh, on Twitch and uh, YouTube. I run I run a game of Dungeons and Dragons for a comedy group in, in uh, New Zealand called Viva La Dirt League. Uh, we have a channel you can find, um, you, Viva La Dirt League D&D, uh, that has work. We've just gone over a quarter of a million subscribers. So we're a little behind you on the uh, the old subscriber count there. Duke, I think you're frozen. Have I lost you? Oh, no. You... No, I'm still yeah, here. You're back. Sorry. You're back. Um, uh, and then when I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm Twitch streaming D&D related content here on, uh, on my channel. So if you like D&D... And you probably do if you hear from what Shark Quest is. Uh, you should you should drop a follow. Uh, I also uh, wrote and um, and sh- and was showrunner for a comedy skit series called D and D Logic, um, where I yep. uh, I took the piss out of some D and D things. So if you like D and D comedy <laughs> skits, I'm sure you'd like that as well. Um, now that introductions are out of the way, um, let's let's chat about your your channel. I'm, I've got a few questions okay. I'm interested in. Uh, I, okay. I, I watched your very right. uh, very um, heartfelt and and teary uh, video of, of you accepting your hundred thousand uh, plaque yes as a, as a sort of like a yeah I, I finally finally made it as I can call uh-huh. myself a youtuber tell me about that it was good good experience uh, 
<laughs> it was a great. So I got it right here. It, it's over here. It's off screen, but just, it's like just, right there. Every just every flexing, time I just I did, I did. Ah, it's right there too. <laughs> I've got I've got, a, got a running joke. In fact, I've even got a uh, a channel <laughs> command in my channel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you have this. Let me oh, just... sorry, I didn't. I accidentally shown it off when I when I lowered my screen there. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, uh, when YouTube first came out, I believe in two thousand five, um, I saw the first videos that came out, like uh, uh, Niga Higa. I don't know if you've known him. He does the how to be ninja, how to be gangster, you know, those videos oh, okay. way back then. Um, I saw those and I just, I fell in love with it instantly. I was like, whoa, this is a thing. And so like, I, I remember re-watching them. I, I tried to watch everything that I possibly could with them watching comedy sketches. And mm. it just, it just made me so happy watching them. And I was like, I want to do this. This is what I want to do with my life. I want to make people happy i want to make people laugh for like the rest of my life and so just throughout i'd <laughs> i'd go and steal my sister's camera that i wasn't supposed to touch and i'd record videos on it and i'd grab my mom's real, camera real good and... videos as well real good uh, scooby-doo oh, videos scooby-doo oh, scooby yeah. getting ready for, for for school that's Big, those videos. videos uh <laughs> <laughs> i did i think the first videos that i remember i did i had these little mini ninja figurines that you could buy for like 25 cents at the gas stations things like that and then i would i'd set them down i'd do stupid little skits with them and they were so dumb but hey like i was i still loved it but um i had a youtube channel before this called Dudot films where i did the streaming and everything and it just did the gaming streaming and nothing really came out of that and it just was kind of disheartening uh, mostly because I was doing everything, everything I, I was doing the thing everyone was doing, and so mm -hmm. I just got yep. lost in the crowd. Yeah. And so to me, I was like, okay, I need to switch things up. My wife introduced me to D and D, and I fell in love with it instantly. And I asked if it was okay if I could focus on uh, making D and D, like focus on the content. And she was like, yeah, go for it. And I was like, okay, cool. Did it. Posted, I think, five videos on TikTok. And I think fifth video went viral and so like multiple people started coming in i was like oh that's really what cool was the, um, what, was the, what, what was the first that went viral which um I, I i can't totally remember i have to look back but i i think it was either me dancing obviously like <laughs> as a bard like i'm just reducing the bbeg it, it doesn't narrow it down <laughs> i know it doesn't narrow it down it was either with your oath of, with your oath of throwing it back i'm pretty sure there's dancing yep. in every video <laughs> I know I've been trying to get away from that because <laughs> it's just it, it takes a lot on my neck. But <laughs> yeah, I can um, imagine you yeah, fucking throwing was either... yourself around. I'm like, he's definitely gonna put his back out in a, in one of these videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it was either it was either the bard seducing the BBEG or it was either the one where I rolled a nat one and I like peed my pants type of a thing. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. and uh, I think that one has like seven. 7.3 million views on TikTok. It's insane. Dang. But it was either one of those, and after one of those went viral, my channel just like yeah. started going crazy. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. And then after a year on TikTok, I was like, ah, TikTok is not very fun with trying to be creative. It doesn't like being creative. It likes the trends and everything going on. Right. And so I was like, ah. So I switched over to YouTube, and then I think March. Sometime in March of 2021, I got the plaque. And, like, to me, this is, like, my bachelor's degree. So, it, like... Yeah, it, I'm sorry. It, this is, like, an associate's degree. The one million <laughs> plaque is, like, your bachelor's degree. Yeah, that's degree. the bachelor's, yeah. Yeah. And then, the, and then um, once you get to the one where they're, like, personalizing it for you, like, the, the diamond plaques and things, that's your, yeah. that's your master's or your That's your, your master's. I know. And so... Um, yeah, this, this is what I've always wanted. I've always and, wanted this. This is... And the crazy thing yeah. to me is that it was in, as you say, like March last year, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and you're now approaching what, four hundred thousand? Did you say four hundred thousand coming up here really soon? So it's, like it's, it's quadrupled I'm, since then in less than a year. It it has. And what's insane for me too is there's been so many things that have happened with the channel in that one year on on YouTube. Like I gotta like step take a step back and remind myself like. You've only been like full time, really focusing on YouTube for a year. And like that one year, this is all the crazy stuff that happened. And at the beginning of this year, there were 
there's just way more things that happened just in January. Mm. And that's like going to reshape the channel. And yeah. we have so many projects coming out. We have so many ideas. It's like, and this is like, I'm beginning the second year and I'm just like, holy crap. Like things are really happening. I am, I will be surprised if I don't hit a million subscribers, at least on one of the channels, the one of the three channels that are coming up. Um, <laughs> Like, it's incredible how like if something takes off it can take off. like i i was really lucky to get this sort of springboard uh from my work with viva uh they, their uh -huh. main channel their main channel has like three million subscribers right uh, and then and then like when we first started putting D, &D content uh, content out for the viva guys we put that put it out in the main channel and the people who yeah. liked it really liked it but the people who were used to them doing like three minute skits weren't interested yeah. in this half hour lo long form um mm -hmm. And so we were like, okay, let's split off and do a second channel. And uh -huh. immediately the second channel got like 100,000 subscribers or something because of the 3 million from the, the yeah. other, other yeah. channel. Um, and then and then when I discovered Twitch only like a year and a half ago, coming up to two years, um, people were like, you should start, you should stream as well. You should stream. And I was like, what would I, I do Dungeons and Dragons. What would I stream on Twitch? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and they were like, no, no, you, you should, you should just stream yourself doing, just talking or doing stories uh -huh. or whatever, playing D and D. So I was like, ah, maybe I'll give it a go. And I was finishing university at the time, getting my um, bachelor's in applied mathematics, completely different, oh, fun. <laughs> completely different uh, uh, genre and and area of expertise. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and I was like, ah, oh, maybe I'll give it a go. I mean, I'm, I am passionate about D and D. And then it took off. And within a year, I'd, yep. I'd made partner. I'd got uh, ten thousand subs uh, sub followers. And uh, nice. yeah, it, I was like, oh shit, this is less. I've been doing this less than a year. And then now I'm yeah. coming up to coming up to two years. It's going, yeah, it's going really well. And I was like, I guess I can make a living doing this because of, as you said yeah. at the start, how ridiculously generous and giving the uh, community is. Uh, it it is, and it's just so cool. We live in a time where literally anything can become a job. Like, it could become your job. <laughs> it is insane. And it, People asking, I, I asking me it. what I do, and I'm like, I'm a dungeon master. And they're like, I like to Kinky. just not... Yeah, I like, <laughs> like to just not give them context and be like, I, uh, I mean, it's nothing weird. I just entertain adults. Uh, I, I help their fantasies come to life. Uh, <laughs> No, I, 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 I like play other characters, and you know, I like we role play. It's just, it's it's a whole thing. Don't there's there's like toys involved. We get to, uh, toys involved. And... Sometimes there could be eight of us involved at once. <laughs> <laughs> they come around to my house. Sometimes I go to their house. I know. Sometimes I go to a share space. We often record it and put it online. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Um, um so tell me. It's great. Uh, Tell me about TikTok. It's, that's one area I've never actually gotten into myself. Um, you said you started uh, on it, and then moved away from it. Yeah, do you still do you yeah, still use it? I do. <laughs> you sound disappointed uh, that you still use it. I just As it's if you have because some kind of contract. It, no, it's not. It's mostly because that's where everyone is at right now. Like mm -hmm. everyone has TikTok. It is the most. So it is. It is everyone's on it and it's great and it's awesome and i you open up a can and it's about to get poured out right now so if i can if, if you want to grow a bigger following mm. you go to tiktok but here's the thing you will not grow based off your followers you will only grow if you are shown on your for on the for you page um the thing that i really enjoyed i'm going to compare it to vine because everyone's comparing it to yeah. vine and tiktok um vine had it really nice where you could follow people and you would the first thing you would see when you would open vine is the people that you would you follow followed. yeah and i i love that tiktok doesn't do that when you open tiktok it will show you a bunch of random people and mm -hmm. it will just show you a bunch of viral videos on there and then you got to go over to the following page where nothing is in order and if you follow <laughs> someone they will tiktok will make it so you see all of their videos from like months and months ago and it's just like okay this sucks like i i understand i just followed you but i don't want to see every single video yeah. that you did i want to see other people other people like it, it's so and tiktok is just not a good platform like it really is not i yes i could say like it i would have not gotten anywhere without tiktok that is something and that's where tiktok has really helped me mm. but 
like to be able to grow everywhere else like it's insane i got almost a million followers like i, I think i'm at like almost 820,000 followers on tiktok i will post a video saying hey guys here's my youtube channel well i am constantly posting and where i put way more effort into that tiktok will suppress videos that talk about going to other platforms right, yeah, and my Facebook videos will own yeah. yeah and my videos will only reach the the views will only get to like five thousand. <laughs> like it is it's, so bad to, it's sickening it is isn't so it bad. like when you think about the fact that somebody's like somebody in some meeting somewhere was like we need to put in the algorithm to rec recognize when somebody's talking about any other platform gotta keep them here uh -huh. gotta keep them here gotta 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 waste as many yep. human human hours as we can gotta have yep. gotta have just people mindlessly scrolling through our content for hours and uh -huh. hours and hours and then one person's like aren't we doing okay <laughs> aren't we like yeah. aren't, aren't we doing fine can we not can we not like just focus on like making the world a better place maybe than like uh huh. Everything that we do has to be about <clears throat> milking and wringing that last second of your time, and everything's like that. Right. I'm like, ugh. and I, I do not think TikTok, like TikTok, is the hot thing right now, and it's been awesome. But I don't think they're gonna be around very longer. Uh, like, I, and I, I'm gonna hold on to that because they do not reward their creators. They do not reward right. the people who is making TikTok big. And that's the sad thing. Like they tried to do the creator fun thing, but I'll, I'll give you a great example. I had a video go over a million views on there and I made $30 off of it. <laughs> what? Yeah, you get a million views on YouTube. It's like, you're getting a four figure payout. Yeah. But TikTok, it was like, oh, here's like, go get your go get yourself something fancy at that fast food restaurant you like type of a thing you don't um, you don't like it tough shit we got 10 million other people making making crap every day that doesn't need to be good quality because because uh, people are just mindlessly scrolling anyway and if they don't like that yep. video they'll move to the next mm -hmm. but that's, that's where i'm really trying to focus more on youtube because youtube implemented the short stuff and the shorts on youtube have helped the channel so much yeah so much uh the subscriber count has grown just because like people will go through and it will just you'll get a mass of people who will see your stuff mm. and who will be able to subscribe to your channel and then when they subscribe to your channel i'll be able to like upload videos you know the ones that like do matter the ones i do yeah. put a lot of work in um those people will then see the channel and then all the time i will just see my views constantly going up and it's really cool because i've because i that's uh, uh the first take on the youtube shorts that's saying that it's actually mm -hmm. helping because a lot of the people I've, I've heard talking about it is saying like youtube shorts will, won't grab people that it'll get your content in front of a lot more eyes but mm -hmm. it won't it won't increase uh subscribers because like people are, it's just as easy to scroll to the next thing as, as it is to click the button to subscribe to it um yeah. so a lot of people have been complaining that youtube shorts aren't really helping them grow or how or, or the people that are subscribing don't then end up sticking around for long long form content because they're more interested in short uh youtube mm -hmm. shorts well i i guess that's where it works really well with me because i do short comedy videos that yeah. work with the shorts and then i post short comedy videos yeah, on my and channel then, and then the main so, co main body of your stuff is also short comedy yeah yeah so and also just to watch a, if they're willing to watch a one minute youtube short it's not that much of a stretch mm -hmm. to say they're then going to be willing to watch a three minute youtube comedy yeah um well, whereas if you're another if your thing, regular sorry. form is like half hour content it's like oh i'll watch mm -hmm. a one minute short from your channel but then if i subscribe and find your main stuff is half hour long i'm not gonna watch it yeah um so the one thing that i will say that i think a lot of people are missing the point on with the shorts is and i've had to talk to a lot of my other creator friends about it and uh, anyone in chat who's wanted to be a creator like this is i am so happy to give out information because i want people to succeed about this stuff mm -hmm. but what people will do is they will like if you watch my shorts and you watch my sh and if you watch my comedy videos they are very identical with how i produce things and they they work and it's like the same type of comedy same type of format in a way yeah but it's just like you know i gotta take the screen and make it that way type of thing <laughs> um whoops um but what people will do is when they go to shorts they will totally alter what their content will look like 
when, when posting on shorts. So like people, like I follow people on shorts. So I'm like, oh, I really like these shorts. Like I love the style that right. you're doing. I'm gonna go follow you on YouTube. And then I go follow them on, or I, sorry. I see their shorts and I'm like, oh, I love your shorts. I'm gonna go check out your other videos that you have. And I check out their other videos and it's like, uh, like total 180. <laughs> like <laughs> their YouTube, long YouTube videos. Shorts. They start yeah. talking about like the the, the, the long form videos uh, reviewing camping equipment. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, well, um, it's, sure it's, it's 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 <laughs> no, it's not just that. It's not like it's because it's like thirty minutes long. Like I will happily watch a thirty minute video, but the but style it's like you hook, and, the yeah. style is so different, yeah. and that's what turns me off. Yeah, and so I, I think that's where a lot so of people if you can, struggle if with. If you it. can find a way to condense what you do and who you are and what mm -hmm. the content you create is down to just a half hour a half minute snippet then you then you'll yeah. be successful with youtube shots exactly yes 100 gotcha. percent. makes sense makes sense um <laughs> speaking of your shots a lot of them are a lot of them are you uh, going to do something and then stopping to roll a dice and getting a one or a 20 and then that yep. thing either happens to i, I, I want to know on average how many takes do you have to do to get the one of the 20? So, and, and it why do you keep putting be... yourself through it? <laughs> Sadly, it's because that's what <laughs> they do the really algorithm well. Likes. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a lot of the times I will roll the number, I will either roll a one or a 20 the first time. I think there's like four videos where I can look at it and I could be like, that was my first roll. Um, but then there's other times where it takes me like, 15 to 20 minutes trying to get that roll and like cool i got the roll but crap the camera wasn't focused the on camera, it or like yeah the, the camera, camera didn't focus or it or like it wasn't framed right it didn't bounce into the right place so yep and it's just like oh. and so <laughs> i'm a perfectionist i am a perfectionist and i i'm becoming more of a perfectionist which which is good um to, to a point uh <laughs> where it's like it needs to look good i cannot give it my minimal because to me it's like if I put 100% into this video, that's what I'm going to be getting out yeah. of it. And I'm doing that with a bunch of like I'm doing that with a lot of my comedy videos now. I'm I'm, I'm starting to switch things up where I'm like, OK, like I have a little bit more time. Maybe I can just do the minimum and take mm -hmm. a little break. It's like, no, I got this time. I need to put in effort like uh, I don't know if you've seen the videos where I like review the first edition versus fifth edition classes and they yeah. kind of go back to each other. Yeah. Um, I had a little bit more time cause I'm doing a different style of comedy that's coming up. Uh, and so I had a lot more time and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a rap. I was like, everyone's <laughs> comparing me to e uh, epic rap. <laughs> yeah. The battle. epic rap battles. Yeah. So I made a rap for the clerics and it just made it so much better. And I'm like, Oh, I can't wait for this to go live. <sighs> so, yeah. Anyway, back to your original question. Uh, yeah, it takes me a while sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. There was uh, there was one uh, that was the uh, automatic twenty rolling machine or something. Oh and, my gosh! And and I was like, he is not gonna set this up. Everything. <laughs> and of course, you throw the dice, it hits a thing, backboard down a funnel. It's like a Rube Goldberg machine runs into a pipe. Uh -huh. And and I was like, oh my god, this is a new level of commitment because a lot of your video, a lot of those other videos will start with just like you going to reach out to a thing and then dropping the dice. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's yep. easy enough to just reset, do it again, reset, do it again. Yep. I was like, yep. you're not doing. And then and then sure enough, it rolls out and it's a four, and you're just like, Psh! I was like, okay, good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was the one good take after multiple takes because you know a d20, it's not a sphere. Nope. It has many different sides, so it will bounce and then it will like bounce off the table or something like that because it hits a corner weird or. Yeah. I don't know. So I saw the four and I was like, that's it. I've done it. I just kicked it. And I was like, I'm <laughs> done. I'm done. So the intention actually was to get a 20. The intention was, but I, I think I was at it for almost an hour and it was, Oh not my God. I, was, I thought, I, I thought the joke, I thought the joke was like, he'll, he'll, he'll just do it the first time until he gets a decent take and then he'll use whatever yeah. it is. And the joke is, Psh. no, the, the joke literally like me kicking it is literally my frustration. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> Like, I sat there, like, looking at my phone. <laughs> I saw the four, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
I uh, I also love the the sort of clever workarounds you do in in the style of uh, one person talking to himself uh, comedy that is all of YouTube. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh I, I love I love the, the 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 fun workarounds with your hand interactions. Like often you'll be passing yourself something. Or oh, my favorite one yeah. is and my I favorite thing where it's like. My... <laughs> it's just... That's my favorite. Like. I don't know just, why. Whenever I edit the hand, it makes me laugh every time. It That's all funny, I do. That it's just like so ridiculously obvious what's happening, and everybody knows it because it's like, oh, unless he's got a quadruplets, it's the same guy. Everybody, oh. everybody understands. Um, uh-huh. But my favorite, my favorite one is the shush one when you reach across the table to shush the other guy, and you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shush. I know. <laughs> Then you pull it. Uh, then you pull it back and go. Mm. <laughs> yep. Fuck, it's funny stuff. Um, I, I love the awkwardness stuff. <laughs> I love adding that implement of thing because it's just like, why, why? You could have not have done it, but why did you do it? Because it's like it's my content and I can. <laughs> because I can, I can do what I want. So tell me about where did uh, where where did some of these run, running joke characters come from? Obviously, the bard seducing everything. That's a that's a trope. Um, no, but the oath of throwing brother. it back, Paladin. Can't, I can't say I've ever seen that as a trope before. <laughs> why, no. why did that come about? So uh, I'll give you the context with the wizard dying of 1d4 and also the throwing it back, Paladin, which has been really cool because I'm like seeing those jokes everywhere now. Like, mm. seen it like critical role chats, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's making it this way. That's so cool. <laughs> Mention 20, uh, I've seen it. It's been I'll, uh, so I'll, cool. I'll, I'll pause you just because there were a couple of people in the chat when I first mentioned it saying, what was the oath of throwing it back, Paladin? So people who yeah. haven't seen it, can you give a, give us a, a brief uh, description? I don't in, I don't yeah. expect you to stand up and give us a demonstration. But... I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, I can't. There's no room. Um, uh, so oath of throwing it back, Paladin, is a joke character I made where it was a paladin who took the oath of throwing it back and he just you know like twerks and throws it back that's the whole joke that's it and, and, people... he, and he attacks backwards with his with his yep, sword yep i take the sword and i attack backwards and, and puts out people... his back people... breaks his neck saw that and they yep yeah. every time i did that character i woke up with such a sore neck that next day i was like i gotta stop doing this but no um so the paladin actually came about to I made a joke. I made a video where I made a joke of like the barbarian rolling a natural twenty on um, performance, and he's like twerking and he's like doing some weird crap, and it blew up, and people really liked that. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do it with every class. And so I did. Okay, here's the paladin who took the oath of throwing it back. That one didn't do as well, but my gosh, did people love it? Like it was everywhere. <laughs> I was getting tagged and things like I also took the oath of throwing it back. I am also of the oath of throwing it back. And it's just it is everywhere. And that's literally where it came about. Like it be it was made by the barbarian. And the, and the sprinkling of water as well. The sprinkling of the wine. I just added more and more effects to it. I, I loved it. And yeah, I, I love that character. I'm very proud of that. And I'm glad where things came up. And then uh so that was the oath of throwing it back. That's that's literally it. That's, it that's all it was. Of, it can be the oath of throwing it out in a minute. <laughs> yeah, throwing your back too. out. <laughs> a lot of people would say that too. They're like, Duke, you need to stop. And I was like, you're right, I need to stop. <laughs> you need to just limber up beforehand. You just need to make sure you're doing proper warm-ups. Make sure I, I know, it just, you know, loosey, just get all loosey-goosey. loosey-goosey. But, um, and then we got the, 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 I think the one that everyone quotes, wherever I talk about any type of wizard is the wizard that dies of 1d4 anything damage anything damage and... 1d4 polite interaction damage <laughs> yep uh that one came from me finding out that wizards only had uh four hit points in first edition yeah and i was like oh, i'm totally gonna make a joke about this on how he's just gonna die because in first edition for those who don't know you there's no death saves if you hit zero you're dead like it's nuts first edition is rough um so like i just made the joke like i think the first video that came into play with the wizard dying a 1d4 damage was it was like the song like i'm not gonna sing it but it was like i have died sitting here waiting for you something like that that song like way back 2000s and it was just the paladin taking damage the barbarian taking damage the fighter taking damage and then it was the wizard on the ground it was like died of 1d4 something damage and he goes i have died and then it just it took off from there <laughs> nice 
<laughs> and, and I made more and more jokes about it, so... And the, and, and, and the costume choice when you were like, wizard, hmm, I'll just take this purple... What is it? Purple <laughs> towel? A purple, purple some sort blanket. Of, some sort of blanket and just stick yep. it over my head because it's a wizard, I guess. I love I love that, like, it's... There's there's a there's a, a charming low budget feel to all of the characters' costumes. Yeah. Did have you actually gone out and like bought specific co- costumes that you're like this is the bad costume now and this is the paladin costume? Oh, like yeah, you, you like keep them if separated you. Out? Yeah, if you if you look at my YouTube videos, like I got I got different I got like 13 different costumes for each different class type of a thing. So like I, I reuse a lot of them just because the, like it helps and I. Yeah. It's a lot, like, especially when I have to do a YouTube video where I'm having to play every di- different class and I got to do, like, 13 different costume changes, <laughs> changes. Like, a video that you see that's, like, only a minute long can take me, like, over an hour and a half to film because I'm constantly getting Changing in and out of costume. everything. I love your, um, yeah, I love your Artificer uh, costume. Mm-hmm. That, <laughs> he's, that one... he's a good character. I, lo- I love my Artificer. Uh, I love him so much. and I think that's the newest costume that I got because people have been asking for the artificer for so long and I was like I don't have a costume for it like that's the that's like the only reason why I won't play certain classes is like I'm sorry like I don't have a costume for it I, I need a costume <laughs> to show people who, who what they is. are so when you yeah so when they come back they could do it and that and that's why like I don't do races when it comes to uh like I don't make a lot of jokes about like the races because mostly I want to dress up as the race and you know like <laughs> Half can't work. Be, can't be I, all I for a Dragonborn all... that easy. Yeah, it's like I I can't do it. Like when I when I go into it, I want to be fully committed. I don't want to be you know half committed. Half assed. When it, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to do that. So a lot of people are like, oh, let, make joke about the races. I'm like, I I can't. Like, I'd love to, but the only one I could really do at this point is elf because I have the elf ear or human. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> so. I um I, I there was one with you where you did all th- thirteen uh, classes. Um, I can't yeah. remember the co- the I can't remember the um, context. Maybe it was like how the different classes plan for a battle or something. And you went yep. through in order, and then you skipped over druid. And my pedant brain went, "He's missed druid." Like I yeah. like I've known yep. I've known the order of all of them for ages. And I was like, "Where's druid? Why did he not do a druid?" And then like uh-huh. towards the end, druid just like comes across and goes, "I'm a sneaky snake. I'm a sneaky snake." I know. It's like, that was another one. <laughs> there it is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I really on. liked your. Um, I really liked your different. How the different classes prepare for Thanksgiving as well. That was a fun one. Uh, and you're standing at that the side one. of the road, shouting about shouting about turkeys. As the yo, team. that one. Yo, if you want to have fun making videos, you just need to be in a college town. Like that's where <laughs> I was at, and I was making videos, and I was standing out there in my druid outfit, and my yeah. buddies recording me, and people are honking, people are coming up and high fiving me. Like it was <laughs> the most embarrassing yet coolest. I think that was the most fun I've had filming. It was just great. Oh, and uh, Oreo says the D and D Among Us was great as well. Yeah, I loved that one. I loved your that was the first that was video great. that hit a hundred thousand a hundred thousand views on YouTube. That was my very first video that hit that. Deserving. It was a, it was a good. It was well yeah. uh, well written so that all of them have their own thing going on, their own characters. Uh-huh. It, it was the, fun. Um, it was good. That, that actually brings up a thing. Your the the people that sometimes when it's not you and your clone talking to another other and there's actually yeah. other people involved. These these uh, just friends of yours that you've roped in. <laughs> they other content uh, creators. What's the What's the deal usually? So they're they're mostly just my friends. They're my friends who I play D and D with. So I I got my wife. So the, the female that you see in my videos is my wife. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other people that have come in. So like, uh, there's Andrew. He was the one who was in the Among Us videos and a lot of other videos. Um, sadly, he's he's back in Idaho and I'm in Texas, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> um, but makes it a little um, better. Yeah, makes it a bit harder, but they're they're just part of the dandy group that I will be hosting soon on uh, our uh, Twitch streams and on YouTube or separate YouTube channel that's going to be coming up. And um, I just rope them in, and I'm like, hey, come be a part of the video. Like, I I love doing. Don't get me wrong, I love acting, but playing every act, <laughs> or being every character is very exhausting. Like, we got this new comedy series that's coming up. I don't know if you know the, um, you know those like comedy videos that are more like you know those discord text based um I, I i don't know if anyone in chat like beluga there's a youtube video there's a youtube channel called beluga and he just like has a bunch of like different 
videos that um it's all it's all in like discord like things are happening in discord and he like takes the messages and like puts them in the video type of a thing they're really fun they're really entertaining and so i decided to do that because i was like i need to switch things up because i'm busting out uh now eight videos a month and i gotta i gotta get one out like every two weeks for things and so um i mean i need to switch things up so i wasn't just exhausting myself and so yep. we're trying this Bel uh, beluga style sketch and i asked a bunch of my players to do voiceovers for some of the characters in there and we just got the first one i, I just got done editing the first one today and it was oh, i i think it's gonna turn out very well they were so much fun to make but so tell us tell us yeah. more about these uh these this new content that's coming out you said that the um you've got a couple you're gonna have three channels uh, by the end yeah. of... <laughs> so uh because <we laughs> got... you, you looked at the amount of work you're doing and went yeah i've got spare time i don't uh -huh. need i don't oh. need all this time for pooping I... <laughs> I don't i don't need to be on the toilet 30 minutes just scrolling <laughs> on my phone um so yeah so by the end of the year we're gonna be having three channels so we have one shot questers which is the comedy channel right now but that channel the, the main channel where everything's being tagged and where people are going to go that channel is going to be called one shot quips coming up so we got like one shot and then q u i p s um i think that's how you spell it um to reference uh one shot questers and we're trying to keep the osq branding going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we're one shot questers since that is my channel and that's what everyone knows me as i'm moving that channel to a totally new channel and that's going to become my main channel where we're going to be doing some big events so i'll give two out i'll give you guys two ideas that what's going to be happening so we got uh uh next week or the week after I'm going to be making the world's tallest dice tower, and that's going to stand over 20 feet tall. And I got to find a place to set that up and to drop the dice down. We got a rec center right across the street from us, and they got a gym. So hopefully they'll let me use it for like an hour or two. Um, so that's going to be really cool. Very excited for that. What is um, it made from? Is it a modular film thing that just kind of clicks oh, together? You're making it from Lego? What's here? Let me, oh. let me show you. It, it, it's right over here. Give me a second. Exciting stuff. What are your guys' favorites uh, from One Shot Questers? What are your favorite skits that he's done? So I don't know if anyone knows these. Uh, they were, I don't know if they still make them, but these, I, I use these things called connects. Oh, connects. Um, they're like, they're, yeah. So they're more like rods and connectors, obviously why they're called connects. Um, I, I I played with these growing up. My yeah, my older same. brother was very into them, and he'd build, like, roller, roller coasters and things like that. So this is a foot. This is exactly one feet, and I got to make 19 more of these. Uh, <laughs> uh, but how it works is I don't know if people can really see inside. I got the little flaps in yeah. here um, where the dice will go down. And this isn't, like, all that I'm going to that Like, I'm not just building up the tower and I'm just gonna be like, here's the world's tallest dice tower, bye-bye, type of a thing. <laughs> um, but no, like what I'm gonna be doing is these little flaps right here, I'm gonna be putting metal, or not metal, I'm gonna be putting wood on them, like gluing wood, so we got that nice wood sound. Clap, and clap, clap, uh, all the way down, yeah. Yeah, all the way down, so you know, it's be, satisfying. Got a, got, got a microphone that you just kind of drop at the same time. Right, exactly, <laughs> that's ex it's exactly what we're gonna be doing. And also, why i chose connects like a lot of people are in chat like why'd you choose connects like why not just do wood like buy a big thing at two by four like two by four and you know set it up and call it good and it's like no that's that's too easy <laughs> yeah. that's not gonna be interesting like i'm gonna i'm gonna do the connects i'm gonna connect it and plus connects are way more you could do a lot with them like i'm gonna make it the world's tallest but it's also gonna be the world's uh world's tallest but also the world's self-rolling dice tower like i got chains and everything where i can put a d20 on and it can roll itself oh wow okay yeah so we're gonna be doing that and also yeah you don't want to have wood, to be climbing up to the top of a 20 foot tall tower to drop yeah, your dice yeah in. so so we're gonna be doing that with it and also like let's say someone beats my record guess what i can just order I more connects and more. Just, like, i can just add like and then i'm done and then it's like cool i got the record again like so it's like <laughs> as long as as long as it stays standing though 
Yeah, I, <laughs> you I could see actually no have to... downfall in using this. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be able to stabilize it at the bottom, surely. Uh-huh. You're going to be uh, so, stabilizing it with connects as well, or like with, with straps and yeah. people holding it? The, the whole thing is going to be connects. So we're going to be doing the whole thing in connects. It's going to be really fun. Oh. And I'm I'm flying my editor uh, down to help me film it. It's going to be like the first time we're going to meet up, and it's, uh, we're excited. Yeah, and that's nice. There's going to be – there's a lot more things that is going to be happening with this dice tower that I, I can't say because, yeah, you know, so secrets. I want you guys to watch secrets. it. Secrets. And it's going to be the whole thing in the video, like the putting together of the connects and everything? Yep. It's going to be putting together connects. We're going to be taking it, setting it up, rolling dice. Uh, nice. It's going to be fun. It's going to be very interesting. And then – you getting you getting huh? Guinness you getting Guinness along to uh, make it official? Uh, I mean we'll see. I I don't know if that will. I mean I reach know, out. I probably, like I reach could reach out, out and be like, hey, this is twenty feet tall. Um, I, I made it. If there's, yada, if yada, there's yada, not yada. a if there's not a uh, if there's not a uh, record for it already, then you've got the record. I I know. Then well, it's official. I, I on YouTube from what I saw was someone being like. Oh, um, this is 11 feet tall. And I went, I'm going to double that. We're going 20 feet. <laughs> and then I was like, 20 feet's not that bad. It's probably like, I don't know. You, re you really don't think about how big things are until you measure it. I'm like, oh, it could probably just go to the ceiling. Like, that's fine. And then I measured it. I was like, oh, my ceiling's only 10 feet. Oh, this is, d oh, no. Like, and I already bought everything. So I was like, oh. Where am I going to so do I had to, like. I know I had to like buy more chain and everything. I was like, "Oh my I'll do goodness!" It. I'll so... do it outside. No nope. wind. Whew. Eleven times two equals twenty. Got it. This is Duke math. Yes. <laughs> um, Duke but um, yeah. So we're gonna be. We're just gonna be. I'm gonna be making things that the D and D fantasy community really has not seen before. Like nice. things that it's like. I'm really trying to go outside the box and make things that are just more unique. Like world's tallest dice tower. Right after the world's tallest dice tower. I'm going to make the world's largest D rollable D20. And we already got the materials coming in for that. Like, it's it's taller than me, and I'm not seeing any other D20 that's bigger than me um, on the internet at all. So we're going to be doing that. And then right after, I got a company who I've already talked to. We're going to make the world's biggest dice tower to roll the world's top biggest oh, wow. D20 type of a thing. Awesome. Like, it's gonna be insane so we got that coming out and that's where the channel is i'm not gonna say anymore otherwise I'm gonna no, spill that's, all the that's secrets. good so that's gonna be your one shot questers channel yeah that's one gonna shot be the Quips main is channel. your short comedy that you've got at the yes. moment and then your third yeah. channel is the one shot questing is... or one shot quests yeah it's or... called actually one shot campaigns and we changed with it. a q we the q there yeah um, <laughs> one shot <so>. campaigns <laughs> yeah so we got that coming up where we currently are filming everything and we thought we were going to get it out on like this month but me and my team and my editor we stopped and we were like talking and we were like uh like i don't think we should go the way that we were planning because one everyone is trying to fight for the same audience of oh we're used to the four to five hour long D, &D twitch streams mm. like and everyone's trying to fight for that audience yep. and there's only a little audience about it and there's so many new people who are trying to get into D and want to be a part of D and start watching streams and so me and my uh team we were like okay how can we figure this out like what are people used to what can we do better how can we have this be more open to everyone and so that's where we're at right now so we got like we got a few episodes already filmed but they're just kind of waiting there until we figure out a good way to edit them and to get them live and to right. make sure things are better. Um, and this is done online or is it in person around a table? Uh, it's done online. Everyone is everywhere around the world. We have one person <laughs> in Australia, actually. So, um, Whereabouts in Australia? Uh, she's in Sydney? In Sydney. I think, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's pretty nasty time zone changes from Texas yeah. to Sydney. Oh, so when we're when we're uh, streaming, when we're playing at six p.m. my time, I think she's waking up at like nine a.m. or something like that. Her time or eleven, I I can't remember. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um. And so your the idea of that is uh, just a proper full campaign. Um. Your DMing. Yep. I am DMing, so DMing. Uh, and you've got four players, five, six, twelve, twelve. I got, <laughs> so I got eight. But how we're doing? <laughs> you it got is, eight players. 
I, I do, I do. But how we're doing it is uh, the way I want to do it is I want to make the sessions kind of like almost like a storybook. Like we got a big storybook that's filled with short stories. Right. And so while we're filming one, th while I'm filming and DMing one session, the next week I go into a totally different session and I'm telling a total different story there. That way when people get on, there's only like maybe three episodes of a short story. Anyone can jump on, watch right, it at smart. any point and yeah. they can get into it and it's like okay the, cool the like now you know is, what's going yeah. on yeah the on-ramp is yeah. a big big um, hurdle for people uh, yeah. doing long form content every week yeah exactly exactly so we're yeah, yeah that's that's kind of how we're doing it so it's just it, it it that's what's happening there's a lot of juggling we're doing with mm. these sessions because we know they're going to do great i'm not i'm not trying to get like anywhere near like D, uh, dimension 20 or critical role or anything like that mm. i just want to be like one of those people it's like here's where you go like if you really want to get involved but here's something like here's a good substitute where it's just like it, it's just anyone can watch it that's that's yeah. what i'm trying to go for so yeah should we um should we have a look at the world map that you've made is that all right? yes all right let's, let's do uh, it let's, let's flick over to incarnate the, uh, yes. the, the 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 map making software you can use it for free obviously uh you get more um more features on it if you uh, if you pay for the premium though um yep. this is a hell of a map how long did it take you i don't know <laughs> too long <laughs> i i did hours it on stream so like and hours. yeah pretty much uh so um i created it with my viewers what's been really cool is the people who've been jumping in on my streams when i've been making my world they the viewers have been a part of it and they've mm. helped made the world that they're going to be watching which i think is so cool like i yeah. i a lot of people saw me built this from scratch and now it's here and um it's been it, it's been a journey because like i look at it at where it was like where it first was um and the stories i had in line and i was just like oh so we're gonna go down this way and then i started making everything else i was like oh the story's changed <laughs> probably like 50 times and now i'm solidified on the story and what's happening and it's been really cool it's just been fun and um and the viewers have been having a good time and it, so many crazy things have happened on stream when creating the world and creating the towns and the backstories to things so, so it, it's been you, really so, cool so did you go into your world creation streams with your uh with your chat not knowing anything yeah. about what the campaign was going to be pretty much and then, and then between you and your chat, you came up with this map. You started coming up with the world, the towns, and, yeah. and that started inspiring ideas for what sort of stories there could be told. Yeah. And and so you it, say it's kind of going to be almost anthology like book of short stories. It's going to be like lots of, like some days you might be down here at Lonely Olean, and some days you'll be up in yeah. Shadows Light and. Yeah. Sort of pretty idea. much so. They're going to be exploring. So the main thing about this is I was like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like really tired of like trying to form groups where they're like, tr I'm trying to find points for them to be a part of the group and to go on adventures, yada, yada, yada. And so I was like, nah, you guys, this world, people are asking for mercenaries. Like mm. you, this world needs people to go out and serve the people of the, what the world is called. It's called Elemic. And I was like, and I said, Bale, Galhand on the map is calling for aid and that's all i did and so my players made characters where they would be inclined to become mercenaries and explore mm -hmm. the world and help people and um important important point to anyone who's a new player to dnd make a character that wants yeah. to be an adventurer exactly <laughs> don't playing, make the yeah, edgy you, rogue that you are making an adventurer yeah <laughs> you're making an adventurer and you're making an adventurer that is going to be a part of an adventuring party with other mm -hmm. people make the adventurer that wants to be there <laughs> exactly exactly so uh, that's what's going on and so it's like yeah we have this we got we got the main story that's happening of course i got a main story and everything that's going to be happening but um like through it it's going to be like okay guys for three weeks like you know when we post a video once a week type of a thing you're going to be following this group this is the story being told mm -hmm. this story will have little to no connection to the main story but there'll be little snippets to the main story it's kind of like yeah there's short stories that the audience can watch and they'll you know they can watch whenever but like for the the fans who watch every single one and yeah, who are be being ready lines. to watch the main story 
they, yeah, there'll, there'll be, be like, stuff going that's on in like the background. The You'll be able to pick up on what the big story is through what's going on in the background of the little stories. Yeah, you're telling, yeah. You're telling so. the main story through these little stories. That's that's clever. Mm-hmm. Way what can you yeah, um, what can you tell me about these different continents? Also, um, is this so, like an archipelago? What sort of scale are we talking with this map? Is this an archipelago or is this the entire world? Um, can't give that away, actually. Oh, okay. Ooh, interesting. Can't give that, that away, so... Everybody roll insight. Um, you but... can read something on his face. <laughs> no, don't, don't. Um, I'll get rid of the persu- face. I'll, I'll roll um... persuasion. I'll get into to tell me. <laughs> Look um... Tell me. <laughs> don't, no, don't, don't. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll, um, we'll find that out during. So then what can you yeah. tell me of these, these continents slash islands then? Yeah, so Bale, so what you're seeing is parts of the world um, of Elemic. So a lot of these worlds that you're seeing were more on higher ground because there was a flood that happened. And so a lot of the water that you're seeing was once land. Right. And so um, it, it's been a huge struggle. So you got the mainland of Bale where it, it's kind of like the promised land in a way. Um, you have Acton, which is currently in a civil war between a tribe of Goliaths, like the Goliaths who were first who first found this land and Elemic and things like that versus wh- who they call the outsiders. And they um, it's, just, you know, just the regular NPCs who live mm-hmm. there. But the Goliaths called them the outsiders. Um <laughs> I Acton, a lot of people have got this, but I'm surprised not a lot of people have like pointed out too much. But Acton is based off of the game called Catan. You can see like the the wood and the hay. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> you god. see the mountains with the stone oh and, my the, god. and the brick. Oh my god. <laughs> Clay. Were you so, playing Catan and was like, I just need some world building and start rolling no, dice? I just I was like, I just want to throw in a funny land. <laughs> That's, just, that that is funny. Be, like, is there a is, is there like one like Titan that roams the lands of Acton and every so often will steal resources? The little robber from Catan? <laughs> <laughs> I should, I didn't even that think about be, that. You should you should um, have like one guy who's known as the robber or the thief or something. And he just like that he's, would be he's good. An infamous high level NPC that just like ro- robs people and then moves on to uh-huh. another territory. I should. You never, that know, would be you never know where he's well, going to be. Actually, I think that's actually, that has happened. So, but you have to watch the sessions for that. But so there's <laughs> Acton. The other big one that people that will really be focusing on is New Lowengard. So, what's going yeah, on there? Obviously, is... obviously draws the eye being purple. Yeah. You, you tend to see purple um, on a map. So. What happened was there was a there was a sorcerer named Deku, and pretty much his goal was to bring every single plane of existence onto the material plane. So it's like you could walk, and what could go wrong. Yeah, you could walk, and you could walk yourself into hell, pretty much. Like <laughs> that's that's what he was trying. To, he was trying to bring every plane, and put him on this plane. It didn't go correct, and so he he blew himself up, and it blew up most of New Lowengard, and you could see the little crevice where it happened mm. i put that down um but what's happening under there is low and guard is still like there's still pieces of low and it, it used to be called low hand but um there's pieces of low hand that are still floating and they're livable and people still roam and they still there's like bridges that connect to all ah, one of the so, islands so now the purple and... that we're seeing is like the the astral beneath it's like yeah so right. And, and all of that is, uh, white is the waterfalls of the rest of the oceans kind of just falling. Yeah, it's just flowing right in. And so Deku, oh, like, succeeded, cool. but he failed at the same time because, like, under it now, there have been creatures and humanoids who have been popping up from different planes. Right. And so, like, uh, he did bring the planes, but they're, they're portals, but no yeah. one knows how to get back. Yeah, yet. yeah, yeah. That's so. Cool. That's a cool idea. Was that something that someone you chat came up with? Like, how did that come about? That's um, so. I don't know. Just specific. I just kind of, I just kind of made it like that way. I was like, "What if this exploded?" And so I made that, <laughs> made and then I just kind of. Plane. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> so, "Let's." So is this? Yeah. So this is a a plane in the sense of an actual like flat Earth kind of a situation. Not yeah, like pretty much a globe. And then there's just like yeah. a hole in the flat Earth, as it were, and the water's falling into it, except for yeah, these floating just... islands. Mm-hmm. That's a really cool so, idea. I love that. It's yeah, it's been fun. It's been very interesting. So and, lots of um, lots of kind of just otherworldly monsters and things you might face there. Like you go to New Lowengard, you're going to be encountering things from other planes. 
most likely because yeah, of all the puddles. Pretty much. So um, <clears throat> it's it's been nuts. And also, like one last thing about this world is it's really new. It's a really new world, and it's already faced a lot of things. And since what's happened with the flood and uh, Low Lohan, they haven't really been able to uh, really focus on the magic side of things. And so I'll just give it. This is the example I give to everyone. Like no one knows what greater restoration is yet. Uh, type of a right. thing. <clears throat> like, so the magic, so my... all of the spells exist, but they just some of them haven't been discovered yet or invented. Yeah, yet. people haven't discovered. And I was telling awesome. my players like hey you your characters are most likely going to be the one discovering these things in this world That's and cool. another thing and i'm gonna to have to fix this but uh in this world too like things are still being created things are still trying to happen and so the one thing i'm saying is like because everyone was like oh dragons dragons like all about yeah, dragons yeah, yeah. you know dungeons and dragons and i my response for this world is they have not been created yet. Ooh, the gods so, haven't created their dragons yet. Yes, so that's, I kind of just leave it at that. That's an interesting that, take so... on it because so many, so many different settings and worlds are like <clears throat> either the dragons have been here forever and they're still here or the dragons yep. were here forever, then they were demolished yeah. or extinct or whatever and the dragons are no longer seen. Uh, but always yeah. they're always like an ancient thing. <clears throat> so yeah. the dragons being new, that's going to be cool. And then potentially, it, potentially during the campaign, dragons are dragons start evolving or being created by the gods. Yeah, it's going to be really dope. cool. I already got the I already got the plan in mind. So, just, so <laughs> how about how about other dr dragon types like uh, dragonborn and kobolds and wyverns and hydra and I don't know whatever else. <clears throat> they sea so serpents. they're not they are not found on. Uh, I gotta choose my words carefully. Yeah, gotta choose your words. I recognize <laughs> I can't, this. I can't let these. Yeah, <laughs> um, they, they they didn't start showing up like dragonborns and kobolds, like more lizardy folk. Yeah, they didn't start showing up until the portals started to open. Right. To these different yeah. uh, planes. And so, <laughs> dungeons that, and yet to be discovered lizardy thingies. Yeah, I think that's I, a good title it, for the game. <laughs> it's called Dungeons, Dungeons and Land. <laughs> dungeons and Land. <laughs> dungeons and Birds. <laughs> um, dungeons but yeah, so uh, there, there's a, like a lot of things that people haven't discovered, and so like some of my players, um, w uh depending on where they're from and who they are they'll mention certain things to the group and the group's gonna be like sorry what is that mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be it's just so, gonna be, so interesting. Even, it's gonna be really how fun. about like how about common uh monsters like goblins for instance would 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 it be like yeah. they, they encounter them and go never seen one of these before yeah so it, it's more of like uh, I, I guess like you would see the more like common enemies uh the common things like like trolls and uh giants you would see those in goblins and just things like that but more of like mythical and more i i, I guess <laughs> the best way i could put it is like more of the mythical and more fantasy style right, yeah, yeah, yeah. um if they see a if they see a unicorn they might be like whoa what the hell is this but if they see yeah, a goblin, pretty much like, that's a goblin yeah exactly that's so cool. i like it this is i'm excited for it's it. gonna be fun so when mm -hmm. do when do when do episodes start dropping? You said that it was going to be later this month, but you decided to take your time with it, make sure that it's the as good as it can be. Yeah. Again, we we're trying to figure out when we want to because we again I'm getting to the point where, um, I just I just been listening to a lot of podcasts and where I want to go with the channel. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been really like I've I've perfected my craft with the comedy stuff, mm -hmm. and I I'm keeping it that way, and I don't think. I'll ever I will ever get crazier with it mm. because people really do like the low budget feel of things. Mm -hmm. It makes people feel like, oh, this is like a I'm watching a friend yeah. video, and uh, I, I think I'll always keep it. At, it has at that, that definite sense of uh, a friend goofing around with you. Yeah. So and, and um, I think Billy Connolly, uh, I think it was Billy Connolly, said like he can never hope as a, as a stand-up comedian and argu inarguably one of the best stand-up comedians of all time. He says he's, uh -huh. uh, he's like, as a stand-up comedian, I can never hope to achieve the level of uh, hilarity that you can see 
in a pub with uh, looking over into the corner at, at a group of friends uh, yeah. all, all laughing about like there's certain thing there's certain levels of of comedy that can happen when you're when you're just goofing around with friends um mm-hmm. and i think your videos tapping into that feeling of goofing around with friends um definitely yeah. helps with that i think yeah because when i started my filming career i started posting videos on facebook for my friends to watch yeah. like yeah so like and that just and then i was a then i was in a sketch comedy group for about like four years that's taught me how to properly do comedy and everything like that so um yeah um it, it's been really cool with that and M- mythical, no um sorry to interrupt but mythical has a good question uh if there's no dragons, what are those winged things over on the because, map there? Because I didn't decide that dragons weren't created yet <laughs> until after I made the map official. And, like, and then you went, as oh, I they're was just scaly at, birds. Shit. They're just, I don't, they're clouds. <laughs> Weird looking that, that's clouds. A that's a thunder cloud. That's a fire and a cloud. Fire and that's cloud. a ice. It's, it's a... It's a the blue cloud in the shape of uh, some weird figure. Um, <laughs> Clearly, why? But yeah, uh, <laughs> the the D sessions. I'm not sure when because I, I really want to perfect them and I really want them to be. The, the thing is, I just want them to be enjoyable. I don't yeah, want course. to film something and then just be like, okay, we got it. We we need to get it out. It's like, no, no, no. I I really want to take my time with it and to make sure it's good and that people will sit and really will enjoy it and have fun with it. Because that's where it's going to succeed. It's not going to succeed if I just throw it out there and it's like, hey, guys, I'm doing what everyone else is doing. Here's another thing Watch that everybody's it. doing. Here's, here's another thing. You can, like, you, I'm see, really... you see some really big YouTube channels, uh, D&D YouTube channels, that uh, you either don't even know that they do um, actual play or you yeah. or, or their actual play just doesn't have interest and they're like they've got huge yeah. followings for their main channel but nobody's interested in watching them doing it because it's a whole story and i've got backlog to get through if i get into it now and yeah and i'm already watching critical role and dimension 20 and adventure zone and viva dirt league right um viva dirt league yes <laughs> uh, which yeah, is so like it's... Yeah. no which is sad and like I, I, I'm so sad because I know you do that, and I I, can't, I sadly can't connect with that because for me, as a D and D creator, I don't know if it's the same with you. Maybe this is something, but I can't invest myself into any, any other D and D campaign that's happening right now. Otherwise, yeah. I will get so burned out with D and D, and I won't yeah. want to look at it. Yeah, exactly. Right. It, there's only so yeah. much you can take in. Like I, I was saying, yeah. uh, I can't remember to whom the other day, but I was saying like it's. It, I, I I have given myself the leave to not know who people are in the industry because like people will be like, yes. oh, do you not know so and so? He he created third edition, and I'm like, uh-huh. I don't know who everybody is. I don't know what everybody's doing. There is only so many hours in my day, and most of which I'm spending making my own shit. I yeah. I can't consume exactly. everybody else's content. I cannot exactly. consume everybody else's content. I cannot keep up to date with who's making everything. This is this is mm-hmm. such a small industry, and in that that we're like a niche of a, of tabletop role playing, which is already uh-huh. a niche of a wider hobby. But even even a small hobby like D and D content, once you actually get into it, you realize there's just a million people. There's so <laughs> yeah. there's so many people. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't I never begrudge anybody who's not actually watched our stuff. It's like we're out there and the people who are watching it are enjoying it and there's enough people watching it mm-hmm. for us to keep sustaining ourselves and hopefully more people find it but i'm like it right it's fine. that's other content point. creators focus on making content <laughs> there's yeah. content consumers yeah. that are consuming the content it's fine exactly exactly <laughs> how, how about uh, oh. how about critical role though you enjoy that you a fan or not a fan i uh, so i have a really bad problem with saying the things i hear <laughs> and critical role just the f bomb is their favorite word <laughs> right and so it certainly is and, in uh, yeah yeah um so little backstory about me i am i'm religious i'm a christian and so like i i tend to just kind of veer off from that type of things hmm. and so um i i just choose not to it's not just that it's also i don't want to get in the habit of using those words for everything like i want to be i almost like for me i almost want to like learn british words where i could be a little bit more 
proper with my sayings. <laughs> um, uh, I, I just don't like being vulgar. And yeah, um, but you you find that in yourself you have a tendency to adopt that language if you're around people using it. Yeah, and, and I don't like that. Like I don't want to. I don't want to say it to my wife or yeah, things course. like that. It's just like I I want to respect her and things like that. Like we'll we'll poke fun at each other here and there, but I don't want mm. like we'll we'll call each other certain things. But we know we're doing a joke. But I don't want to yeah. like I don't want to to get into a heated argument where it like slips and i say it and it's just like oh crap um yeah. so I, I don't ever want to do that and also like i really just want to keep things family friendly and that's always what i wanted to happen yeah in my in my videos and i've <laughs> anyway i'll have to go into something here in a second um uh i uh I really want to try to keep things family friendly because I've always wanted families to be able to sit down and watch my content together. And it's mm. been really cool to see that because I see like dads and moms get on. They're like, my kid have has been watching your videos nonstop laughing and we're now fans of you. And it's just so cool. And to me, that is so cool to see families bonding yeah. with one another with my and, and so and th th now this go exact i've seen the comments already a lot of people are like cthulhu so i actually had to private those videos or delete them from my uh accounts because again i'm religious i'm a christian i just i just recently got a like a pretty good leadership calling within my church and i don't want people looking at that being like that that's like one of my leaders like the one who's saying he effed cthulhu he's one of my leaders and i'm like i, I can't have that on my channel anymore <laughs> what about what about all the ones of like the warlock with the pentagram and satan and all of that stuff then oh uh, i i think those ones are fine um i i guess there's like a line where i'm drawing <laughs> it but like the biggest one is like you know if you have like your christian beliefs and everything like <laughs> I swear, like, I'm mouthing the word, I'm mouthing the F word a lot, and I'm saying, mm -hmm. like, I'm going the Cthulhu, and I'm like, ah, just have, you, you know. Gotta, yeah, every, you gotta, you gotta draw the line where you feel the line should be. Yeah. Yeah, the, the pentagram, the one, I, I have so many people who quote that to me, even, like, even my Christian friends and people who are religious, they'll come to me and they're like, we freaking loved that sketch. <laughs> um, so like with people getting that one, that one's that one. I'm like, okay, I think that one's fine. But the, the Cthulhu one is gone. I, I don't want to be associated with it anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. That's fair enough entirely. But anyway, yeah, I, I forgot um, what the question was, but there's that. <laughs> I, I don't remember. Uh, the um, oh, I, I just I just like uh, just asked if you uh, were a fan of Critical Role. Are you a fan oh, of right. um, other other creators at all? Like uh, Dimension Twenty, you mentioned you you I, some of their stuff. I love their stuff. I love the um actually thing that they're doing because they're all part of College yeah. Humor. Uh, I love Brandon Lee Mulligan and he's amazing. Isn't um, he? he's amazing. I just love their cast because they're all just unique and witty and fun. Yeah, like they're they're just they're just fun people uh and um like the the only way i could keep up with everyone is just kind of watching clips and just kind <laughs> yeah. of like you know the reels and the shorts like i watch them to see what they do and what they have and i, I that's like the only way i can keep up with it um favorite dnd content creators uh, that's that's really hard because i uh, it's gonna sound like rude I'm not meaning it to be rude, but I I tend to not really watch other D and D That's, content. It's quite it's quite common. It's quite it's quite common. Yeah, as I say, as I, I say, there's it, something it, about content creating that is a different job to content consuming, and you don't necessarily want to yeah. burn yourself out with consuming stuff on your downtimes. Uh, yeah, is so related to the work that you do in your on times. Right. Well, and also it's more of like I don't want to actually I. For me personally, I don't want to accidentally watch a video because, uh, but I'll give you a good example. Like XP to level three. He does, he does comedy yeah. sketches like what I do. He does a little bit more long form and his stuff is really good. Um, for me, I don't personally watch his stuff because I don't want to accidentally watch one of his videos. And, and then, then when I'm writing it. sketches, nonchalantly write a joke. Yes. Yeah. And then I post it and people are like, you totally copied that. And it's just like, crap, I, I did. Like, I didn't mean to, yeah. but I totally did. 
And so I, I don't watch anyone. Like, I, I don't really have a favorite. That's I'm my favorite D&D creator. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I love what everyone does, and they're doing a great thing with what they do, but I personally cannot watch it for the sake of my content. Yeah. Like, I don't want to accidentally copy someone's. And that's, that, that's going to sound so ironic, bad. because a lot of people, I will copy styles of people. Um, like, I, I don't know if you know Tom Ska. Um, he's like one of my favorite sketch comedy creators that's ever. Sounds um, he, he, he's done the Astiff movies. So the ASDF about... movies, you don't know what those are. Oh my gosh. You need to watch those. They're like, oh, they're wonderful. Um, ASDF. people, I watched him and I watched Niga Higa and people can easily tell like where my styles come from. Like my style comes from them because I'm huge fans and that's where I learned from. Um, like I got a video that's coming around with epic rap battles. But, like, the thing is, is, like, I'm using their style, but I'm not using any of their jokes or their content. They're using, yeah. It's just like, okay, this is their style. Got to kind of replicate the style, kind of do my yeah. own thing. Um, the, yeah. But, <laughs> there, yeah. there was a funny example of that with, um, uh, uh, um, I was going to say One Shot Questers, One For All. Uh, with One yeah. For All, uh, the Deer Stalker Pictures guys, that mm -hmm. uh, I was, yes. I was, I, I'd written uh, the first season of D&D Logic. And there was one episode towards the end uh, called Reveal, and the the joke is obviously that uh, they they walk into like a big dungeon, and and the the hooded villain, the big bad evil guy, takes his hood off. Yeah, and, I'm you've finally made it through my traps. Uh, it's good to see you again, monk. Blah blah blah. And the monk's like, uh -huh. what? Who are you? And yeah, and the whole joke is that he's obviously not paying attention and hasn't doesn't know his own backstory. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And the day that we filmed that episode. I went home absolutely shattered from a day of filming and grabbed my microwave meal and sat down, opened up YouTube, and the first thing on my subs uh, on my oh, feed no. is uh, is a new video from One for All. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Click it. It starts off with a big bad evil guy at the coast, lightning coming from him, and then he turns around and goes, you finally made it. And they go, who are you? And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> It's so. Oh. <laughs> it was. Oh, I was like, you. Ca you can't write this. Like, I. I couldn't. I. I had to. I had to comment, being like, oh my god, I've just. We just filmed this episode, so that when our episode then came out uh, yeah. like a month later, people were. Uh, they uh, most. I don't care if people think I'm stealing jokes. If I'm not, um, but if the content creator thinks I'm stealing their jokes, that's going to be a problem for me. So I, I wanted right. to make it shorter them because I've had them on my channel before. I'm. I, I'm. I'm pretty good friends with a couple of them. So oh, I good. was, I was, I was like, "Hey, I need, I need you to know, I didn't copy any, I didn't copy your jokes I, I, here. Like we just filmed this that. episode. <laughs> I've done that with a couple of people. <laughs> um, can't remember what it was, but I filmed something, and then uh, I think a con, like a TikTok creator or something like that that I was close to, posted something very similar, and I messaged them. I was like, "Yo, you have no, I filmed like almost this exact same thing. <laughs> I want you to know that I did not copy you. Yeah. Like." This is kind of nuts, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's it's the we're making jokes about D and D. There's going to be there's just a small tree to pluck fruit from, so you're gonna you're exactly. gonna end up plucking, going reaching for the sim fruit. It's it's yeah. understandable. <laughs> um, complete change in tact. Then let's talk about uh, something that I saw you announce, which sounded very exciting. D and D in a castle. Oh right, tell me I about, about that. T tell, <laughs> tell, Tell me about that and w and when it got cancelled because of the world shutting down and whether it's still going ahead and all of that. Oh, oh, I let me make sure it's still going. Uh... <laughs> so, uh, for those who don't know, while you're looking that up, D and D in a castle is uh, is just as it sounds. There is a castle in the north of, north of England, um, uh, at which they get uh, various different dungeon masters from all over the world. Uh, they fly them in and, and, and they play D&D &D in a castle in a sort of a more medieval <laughs> setting. Um, you announced that you were invited in as one of the guest yes. D&Ds. So uh, I, I, they didn't specifically reach out to me. I actually got a buddy, a Dice Cream Sandwich. I don't know if anyone knows oh, yeah, Kevin. Buddy. Oh, yeah, he is... The dude knows how to... F uh, not market, what's the right word? He knows how to connect with people. Like, right. oh my gosh, like, he's the reason like all of the DD content creators like I I'm, I'm fully giving him full credit in this he's the reason all the DD content creators was able to go to gen con last year like he oh, was wow. able to get events going and 
uh, make us be able to play in sessions. And I was part of that. And it was so cool. I got to meet so many of my friends and it was so heart wrenching to leave all of them <laughs> by the end of it. But, yeah. um, he reached out and he's like, Hey dude, I got this like paid opportunity if you want to do it. And I was like, it's right after Gen Con, man. I'm tired. I don't want to like talk <laughs> about this. And so we jump on a call and he was like, Hey, so I already threw your guys. I already threw your name in. I am working with Hasbro and they're, they're doing anything with D and D in a uh, D and D in a castle. And your, your channel already got pre-approved. They want to talk to you. And I was like, what the crap is D and D in a castle? It's like, <laughs> Oh, they fly you, They fly you down to England and uh, you play D and D for three days straight. I was like, wait, whoa, 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 back up. Hold on. Wait, we're, we're playing D&D &D in a castle? And he's like, yeah, you create a campaign. It's like eight hours a day. You And you're in this castle. You're being like fed food there. There's a bunch of different games. You have your own group. Your fans can come in and sign on with you. It's like the best field day for any D&D &D hmm. creator or fan out there. And so I was like, oh, okay. And so I jumped on and they talked to me and... They're like, yeah, when do you want to go on? And I was like, I'm going to be really busy, so we'll do your last rounds. And so, and if anyone joins on the very, on round eight, the very last round, which is uh, 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 Halloween, we got some pretty fun things going to be happening. You won't be getting just D&D &D stuff. You're, there's going to be a lot more activities. So, um, yeah, so this is like the one time where I can actually go out and play D&D &D with my community and have some fun and have some laughs. I think I'm yeah. going to throw them into the world into the uh, Elmic in the world that people nice. will be watching. And so like people will come in and be like, Hey guys, you're playing in my world. Um, cool. it, it, it's just kind of weird because like, I, it, I'm surprised they reached out and, or I mean, I shouldn't say I'm surprised I was accepted. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in like, I'm looking at it and it's like round seven, round eight. It's like, you're with, uh, Satine Phoenix and <laughs> all these other people who are listed here. And it's like, I'm nowhere yeah. near as <laughs> good as them. And I'm like in the same realm and I'm going to be meeting them. And it's but just that's, like, that's just the imposter ooh. syndrome talking though. Like, you, you, I you, know, I know you've obviously so. got a good head for it in order to have made it this far with making comment comments about it and stuff. You've got a good head yeah. for knowing what is comedic. Um, I know. I need. I need, I need to, to know what. Visa. Yeah, in order to know what comedic, uh, what is comedic in regards, regards to D and D, you need to know the basics and fundamentals of what makes good D and D and bad D and D. Exactly. Exactly. So, I th I don't put yourself short. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was, I was very excited when, when I heard you announce it. I went and looked it up because I'd heard Satin Phoenix talking about it as well, um, mm -hmm. which is when I first heard about it, and then, uh, and then went and looked it up. And, uh, and shout out to my audience watching. Uh, you can go to the website and suggest a DM, su suggest a DM that you would love to see in a future yeah, round of D&D of, uh, &D in a castle. So for those, Robert. particularly all of the people <laughs> in, in the UK who are like, you should come to the UK and play D&D one time. You can you can do that by uh, oh, yeah. suggesting like, me to D&D &D in a castle. No, it's super cool. And again, uh, I just saw some people talking about price, but it's like, yeah, it's kind of expensive, but like, when is the next time you're going to be able to play D D in a castle you eat sleep in the castle <laughs> and you get to go to all a bunch of different rooms and play it like i gotta go choose a room where it's going to be the setting for the campaign so if like we're playing in a dungeon i could go down to like the dungeons and we're playing oh, in the dungeon nice. like it's That's cool yeah it's expensive but like it's going to be a memory that's going to last forever yeah, it's not it's not thing. like a thing you're going to be doing every every week or even every year. It's yeah. a, it's a thing you do once and go wasn't that amazing and you talk about it like going to going yeah. on a family trip to Disneyland or something. That's expensive as well, but you you you're doing mm -hmm. it for because you're saving up for it. You're in, you're looking forward to it all year. Mm -hmm. uh, so so the people who go uh at your table for one day for 8 hours are they there for the the 3 days as well? So the round is uh, so I'm doing two rounds. I'm in round seven, round uh, eight. So me personally, I'll be, I'm going to be there for like two weeks in England doing everything. And I got to make two different campaigns. Or I can just be lazy and make one campaign. And one just campaign. Do both. Anyway. <laughs> just um, put a stipulation. Nobody's allowed to buy, the t buy two tickets. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> exactly. You can't do two or you're, you're going to play, play the same thing. Um, so you, the group you're in. So I, I think there's like six spots like that's available and i know people have told me i think i got like four people 
who are coming on my side and that's just me announcing it once and so i was like oh cool <laughs> um but if you sign up for round seven we'll just put it into perspective if you sign up for round seven you are in a DD campaign with me for three days straight type of a thing wow. with the group you're around and we're sitting we're playing we're we're having drinks we're we're having and, food and and the rounds you said there's like eight rounds and what is that like every week there's like eight weekends is it is yeah. it round a weekend so, essentially yeah so it's like they're they're starting they're they actually start when did they start they start next week or next month yeah they start in march um they begin starting in march and uh um so they got they got the time during around spring break is when they're going to be doing it obviously and then the next rounds is happening more towards like august october when there's fall break um and that's where i'm going um but how it how it is it's pretty much like i got one weekend where i'm dming a group for three days and then the next weekend i have a totally new group and i'm dming that uh that group as well so like we just kind of have it for weekends and then we start up again nice. so damn that's pretty cool so they they yeah. fly you out they fly you out all expenses paid or mm -hmm. yeah 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 that's dope. it's yeah <laughs> so um <laughs> and you get to I mean, meet all of these other dms as well has anyone that's uh, i do it yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be very crazy just doing that and i don't i don't know where i'm gonna be like it's gonna be weird like i could show up and like some of the dms could be fan of me like that's kind of the weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh huh. You're um mm, what? <laughs> um, it, yeah. It's all it's all paid. I I even get paid for, but like I'm actually not gonna be seeing anything because my wife was like, "You're taking me with you, right?" <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Yes, I am. Don't worry." <laughs> yes, but you'll like, also be spending all day every day on your own <laughs> as I as I'm in a castle. I, working uh, right well i i told i i told her i was like i like we'll, we'll figure it out i'm not sure i i almost was gonna tell her for like the second week to go be in the be in a group with mm -hmm. someone else like go yeah. be in a dini group like i'm dming i don't want you to just be stuck at the castle or you know exploring england by yourself yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's like, lucky that your wife is obviously into D, &D as well so like she's actually got something she can be doing <laughs> uh-huh oh actually sorry i've seen in the chat people are saying like well she could be in the group with you but i i told her i was like no nah, i love my wife and i appreciate her but the thing with it is like she always gets to be around me you know we live together and everything surprise married people live together what? um <laughs> i know it's crazy um but i was it, it was more of like uh let me have this one-on-one -on -one time yeah well, she gets she gets she gets time with you like this she... is the time for fa people who want to play with you that don't get the opportunity to exactly yeah like it was like gonna be like the one time most people are ever gonna like see me yeah type of a thing because yeah, exactly. like i don't know when i'll go to england again well, i don't know <laughs> That's pretty cool though so it's october this yeah. year and it's going ahead no uh, as far as at, at this stage anyway <laughs> so far i mean like so many things have been cancelled I, uh, I was i was I, I was due to be fly i was due to be flown out um business class all expenses paid to D, &D live oh, uh, start no. of last year uh, march last year yeah <laughs> and i was like well that's not happening <laughs> and then uh, and then i was gonna go to um to pax australia uh this uh, just end of last year and that got cancelled mm -hmm. and I was going to go to Armageddon, which is a nerd convention in Auckland, and that got cancelled. I'm oh, like, okay, yeah. eventually I'll start going well, to some of these nerd conventions and things. I know, I know. I was like, again. part of me was like, wow, I get, I become famous when everything's on lockdown and I can't do anything. <laughs> but I mean, we'll see how everything goes. I, I, I don't like bringing things up, but just like there's more and more reports saying that like the lockdowns and things didn't really help anything. So like we could start seeing things open again you yeah. know yeah I think it's, or I we'll think we'll see things not be getting closed there we go <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll 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 have time it'll just yeah. happen at some point just gotta have patience yeah um moving I, I don't want to take up all your all your time i don't know if you've got hard out today um but there's a few other things yeah. i wanted to chat about that you've mentioned you okay. you announced um goblin heist like a betrayal on the trail at house on the hill yeah sort of thing. is that yeah how did that start about that. Is that still going ahead? Is that on the back it, burner? It's on the back burner right now. It's, um, I, I can't remember how it came into play. 
And what I, is oh, it I, I know. It was, it was like, oh, I, you know what? Like, I, I was trying to figure out like what I want to do on my Twitch streams. I was like, oh, let me like make a game where I can play with my Twitch viewers mm -hmm. and they can like play. And so I made, you know, I was like, oh, let's do this thing called Goblin Heist. I've heard some people like do this thing where people play online and you know it's just a fun little or it's it's a little module from what people do and um it, everyone's like a level one goblin you have one hp if you die the next person takes your place type of <laughs> nice. a thing and so i was like oh a, let me this build is a board game yeah yeah or, no it's game? it's or a video game uh, for what i'm doing yeah i'm just like, so, for the people uh, yes. who didn't hear the announcements or anything give yeah context no um it so it's a board game that i'm trying to make and it's going to revolve around D and D five E, or you know, it, if it comes out, it's either going to be D and D five five or D and D six, something like that. Um, but it's a board game, and it's played in the same way as Betrayal on the House of the Hill. And how I have it right now, and definitely things are going to be changing around, is like you have to go through your your goal is to go get from point A to point B, and then back to point A. And right now, everyone's in a castle. The goblins are in a castle. And what will happen is you'll go into a different room. You'll flip over the room. You'll see what the room is. You'll roll for what's happening in that room. And depending on what's happening, you have to roll for a certain stat. Like, oh, no, the king and queen are having an argument. Roll a stealth check or you'll get stuck between their argument type of a thing. <laughs> and right. so people will have to, like, go through. And there's, like, items that you can find and... Um, these items will help you get past other rooms. Like, for instance, you go into a different room, you find the king's scepter, and then you go into the throne room where the king and queen are having the argument. You can give them the scepter, and you can pass through freely uh, through right. that room not, yeah. type of a thing. So that's what we have it, and the goal is to, like, find a key and then find the basement, and then when you get into the basement, you got to get past the, the boss, the BBEG, or whatever monsters down there, grab the gold and try to escape the room, uh, trying to escape throughout the room, you know, without getting caught in mm -hmm. the other rooms because the rooms are full and everything. So if you have a arms full of gold, yeah. like people are going to try to stop you. So um, that's where it's at right now. It's It's been on the back burner. I haven't touched it for a while just because of all the new things that are coming up. The board Damn, game is man. just like... You're so lazy. It, it, I know, I know. Why don't you, I just, why don't you just work harder? I, I'm trying to, you know, I, I thought about maybe starting a fifth channel. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, jumping over the fourth and into a fifth? Uh, no, just going right into fifth. Just straight, into fourth. Straight, straight into the fifth channel. <laughs> Setting it up and just confusing everybody, being like, so guys, we've started a fifth channel. And everybody's like, Wait, I thought he only had three. And no, just goes out searching thing. and you're like, no. That's actually a br that's actually a brilliant strategy. Like, hey guys, so we started our fifth channel. I have three. We started our fifth. That way, people just keep searching my name, searching and, and the searching algorithms and like, try, oh my gosh, people are yeah, really exactly. looking for this guy. What is why? Where's the fourth channel? And but it'd be like uh, one shot quest is fourth channel. It'd be, it's like the, the that's what people would be searching for. One shot quest is fourth exactly, channel. exactly. And then eventually, <laughs> and then eventually. Boom, you release a fourth channel and call it One Shot Quest's fourth channel and then all of the searches. And it, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then it's just like it's just me like eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> just a single just, video. No, I just, just slowly just eating, eating it. it. To, just getting the bowl out, pouring the cereal, pouring the milk. Mm -hmm. Just barreling the camera the whole time. Yeah, no. Oh, you know what? You just made me think of another project that we do have uh, coming up um or not coming up it's still in the works i still need to figure it out but um i don't know do you watch do you know who markiplier is yeah okay do you know his uh his heist with markiplier no video oh okay so what he did was he did this thing where it was like an interactive video where people would watch the video and be like all right guys should we go right or left or should we go down the dark corridor or the light corridor and people would be able to like choose right, which okay, video yeah. they, they go down to gotcha. um me and my team are planning to do something like that for the nice. D, D community like that's cool oh no like there's guards coming hurry roll your d20 what's your modifier okay <laughs> add your modifier to it 
then click on the video what your modifier I have, is. I have 20 will... different videos that I've made. <laughs> if you got a 16, yeah. roll this, this video. If you uh, got yeah. 17, though. <laughs> it's going to be more of like... Whoops. It's going to be more maybe, like 15 maybe some through 20, 14 through 10, <laughs> nine, 9 through... Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to be 30, doing I that. I made 30 different videos in case you've got negative modifiers and plus 10 modifiers. <laughs> exactly. So um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're... We're, we're going to be we're so gonna people be that. people watching that would uh, they they'd have stats of some kind or they just get flat bonuses. What, how would they? I would either add? I would either provide them a basic character sheet for them to do, or people could. I'd be like, if you want to use your own character, start at level two, and right, put yeah. down your modifiers. Like we're mo focusing we're mostly focusing on modifiers or your attack on this one yeah. type of a thing. Uh, in the future, I would love to do it where it's like. Obviously, we're going to have a very basic one to start off, but in the future, I would love to have to do it would be like when I'm talking to them like, are you a wizard or are you a fighter? And people will go through and we have two different scenarios yeah. where people are casting spells or... Uh, <laughs> the, the, real easy to do. The wizard one's just like, are you a wizard? Click this video. And as soon as you click it, it just comes up, flashes up like three frames and it says, you died of 1d4 clicking damage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, just show the... Uh, go back to the fighter. <laughs> it's just the... It's just the uh, it's just the um, uh, that uh, the outline of a Grand Theft Auto Five that ding you died. Yeah, you died. You died. You died of one d four clicking damage. Go back. Uh -huh. Click this video to choose fighter. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty. Cool. You just throw in one video where it's like, <laughs> ah, you're finally awake. <laughs> just throw in the Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. You're finally awake. Just, just take them to the Skyrim, <laughs> Skyrim <Yes>. opening. <laughs> um, that's All cool. Right. That's, so is that, that's just an idea you have? There's no like, actual plans to put it in the works yet? That's a far off back burner? Or are you actually started making that? Started thinking about it? It'll, it would start. Honestly, it could start whenever I write the script. <laughs> uh -huh. I just so you've got ideas for now. To. I got ideas for it. I got. I, I know the story and everything that I want to do with it. I just just need to actually. There's other things have become more important write than writing yep. that. Yeah. Yep. Um, tell us about your plushies because I saw that you have uh, DD plushies. I don't know if anyone's a fan, but the <laughs> my plushie is showing up tomorrow. Uh, there she is. This with the little. I know. Yep. She's a little cutie. DD. My, we're getting an actual plushie of her, and my hand on review is showing up tomorrow. And if I get that, I give them the okay. And, um, we're gonna be doing a Kickstarter for it because I need mm. to make sure that like people actually want it because it's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be like for total production costs and everything, it's gonna be around 10 grand, right? So, like, I, I need to make sure you, you know I can get at least the costs. base. Yeah, I yeah. need I need to make sure we get the base minimum of that. Um, sadly, just because it's on Kickstarter at first, it's only going to be available to U.S. people in the United States, and I feel so bad doing that. But at the same time, I don't want to charge everyone the amount it's going to be to like ship it internationally. But mm -hmm. so you've got your um yeah uh, your plushie that's uh, on Kickstarter. If people want if people want it and they happen to be in the U.S., they they can get it get it on Kickstarter. Is it? Uh, where, where, yeah, where uh, it's not up yet. I, I gotta, I gotta get the. Uh, it's coming tomorrow, and I gotta make sure it's all good and good, right. and, and then I gotta set everything up and get that up, and then I will set it up on Kickstarter, and then I'll let everyone know. It'll, gotcha. it'll be on my channel. Don't worry. Like I will announce it everywhere because everyone head wants over to, to my one shot gosh. questers on any of the things YouTube most likely. Um, uh -huh. You can, you can see. Are you on Instagram, Twitter? People can see the plushie when you when it arrives tomorrow. You can be showing it off. Um, maybe I honestly do not know because I'm trying to get all my videos done. And so uh -huh. my, my priority right now is because I got my next bulk of videos. And so this is editing week. And so uh, I'm trying to get all of my videos done and edited. Um, so, you know, the new video could come out Monday. Like today's video was the last video of the bulk. So like there's no other video schedule. So I'm trying to get the next 12 videos nice. done and edited and out. So. 
<laughs> well, um, when you're when you've checked your plushies and it's going well and they've sold a million units, uh, I'll definitely want to chat with you okay. about it because there's a few uh, there's a few of my uh, lovable NPCs that a lot of people are like. We want to see a life size. The I, I run a, an interactive game of D and D here on the channel every uh, every week. Nice. Where I'm the dungeon master and everybody in the chat is controlling the player. Um, it, like That's a hive, so cool. like a hive mind situation. They all vote on what to do next. And uh-huh. the the one the one player the solo because it's kind of a solo campaign. I didn't want them to die straight away, so I gave them an animal companion who is a giant bee, and she has like an adrenaline stinger in case the character goes down. So they've got like a life. Nice, life. yeah, and, that's uh, good. And she's just become a fan favorite. She's a giant bee, of course, so she's going to be. <laughs> she's, people are going to go crazy for her. So so uh-huh. everybody's like, oh, we need we need a plushie of Mel, the giant bee. Uh, so I was like, I'll look into that w- at one point when it's. When it seems uh, lucrative enough, cool. when it seems like it'll actually pay for itself, because it's not cheap. Right on. It's not cheap to get one designed no, and then printed and made not. and shipped um, out. Reach out to this company. I'm going to send it to you in Discord. Sweet. There you go, guys. Putting uh, putting w- putting uh, plans in the works to eventually get you, get you that mill mill plushie. I just better not kill so, her in Twitch Tales. <laughs> right. All right. Um, yeah, I well, I will have to get going here. No, that's but fine. I it's uh, about just, the time that I expected yeah. uh, to wrap anyway. So thank you very much Perfect. for joining me. It's been an absolute delight yeah, to uh, you, get dude. to chat with you. I've uh, enjoyed your videos for quite some time. Um, I'm glad. Where, final words of... of uh, advising people where they can find you and and what to look out for with your new channels and things yeah you can find me anywhere at one shot questers at the moment or osq um but you just just keep a lookout on for the shift from the comedy video channel to the main channel because that um i'd want everyone to go to the main channel because that's where all the big projects and where i would love to yeah. have everyone see because those ones are going to be big big projects where we're giving back to the community. Um, other than that, no. Like I think I've said everything. The things coming. are good. If you like, and, uh, if you like D and D comedy stuff, definitely check out One Shot Questers on YouTube. Uh, when he has more time, I'm sure you'll get back to Twitch at some point. <laughs> yeah. And if you're here from uh, Duke's content, um, if you like D and D content, stick around on, on mine as well. I, uh, I'm, I'm Robert Hartley. I do Dungeons and Dragons related content several times a week here on Twitch and also um, on YouTube with uh, Viva La Dirt League. Uh, love to have you around in part of the community. For now, though, we will let you guys go. I'll see you in on. Right. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks.